Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's edition of SCLC Today TV. I'm Maynard Eaton, and of course, our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. Dr. Steele, we begin on a sad note, the passing of yet another civil rights leader, Vernon Jordan. I imagine you knew him well. Absolutely, through the years, uh, he's always been a role model, and working with the Urban League is when I actually had the opportunity to meet him uh, with Dr. Joe Zolari and been at several luncheons with him. And uh, as you know, man, we, we must carry on, but he has a legacy within his own right. And we thank God for the opportunity of what he has accomplished. As a gentleman, he's a gentleman who came from a David T. Howe, Howard High School, right down the street from SCLC's building to become a friend of presidents and a, a, a political power broker in DC. Quite a journey for him, was it not? Absolutely. Uh, I remember a story he used to tell in regards to uh, him growing up and trying to provide uh, as, as a high school student, as well as going to college. But here in Atlanta, uh, he, he, he was really a chauffeur uh, on several occasions. And I think his father uh, was in the business of, of, of working in terms of driving the dignitaries around. And in this particular times, uh, uh, I think it was a mayor at that particular time. You're talking about back right. in the 50s, man. You know right. what the perception was. So uh, to make a long story short, he said that uh, as he was driving and this particular mayor uh, realized that that he could read. <laughs> that he said, "Boy, you can read." <laughs> you know, he was amazed uh, at his teenage years that he had that type of ability, and that led him scholastically, uh, you know, to ultimately being a, a, an attorney and being a great leader in civil rights, including of being one of the uh, uh, national international leaders of the Urban League. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but we look back at the the star civil rights uh, organizations, SCLC, NAACP, National Urban League. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, the Urban League was about the boardrooms and not the streets. Was that correct? That's correct. No, that's correct. Uh, they were basically dealing with uh, corporate America and uh, dealing with uh, the opportunities of jobs. You know, man, it's just like playing on a football team. We're all on the team, but we have different responsibilities. And um, they they were good at what they did. Uh, they kept the, uh, the, the, the status quo in terms of the lack of ability in corporate America with uh, uh, African-Americans, people of color, Negroes at that time, uh, in terms of what we didn't have and what we need to look forward to going into. Uh, they also gave the State of the Union message and did a great job on the research in terms of, you hear me quoting different stats. That's what they do. And particularly today, they coalesce with other uh, research teams and give us the facts. Speaking of corporate America, in your backyard in Alabama, Amazon is trying to prevent their workers, mostly black workers, as I understand it, from uh, being unionized. I'm sure that's troubling to you. Well, I've been working with the unions and civil rights for many of years. And the philosophy is that I tell corporations, if you treat your employees right, and, 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 and this is a capsule right to the fact, if you treat your employees right, giving them nice benefits, nice retirement, uh, nice uh, wages, hourly wages. You don't have to worry about anybody interfering and trying to organize in your company. But if you're not treating them right, the union should come in heaven handedly with all of, 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 of their uh, notable uh, skills and articulation and research in winning over the employees to let them know they have a right to a union. 
But I don't care how hard a union or any other organization try to come in to win those employees over. It's going to be very hard and difficult if the company is doing the right thing. So what am I saying? You got 50% in one end, 50% in the other. It's up to you, corporate America. How do you think this will play out uh, with Amazon in Alabama? Have you heard? You got any, any insights as to what's well, going to happen? Some of my friends from Alabama have called me. Um, basically, I heard that Amazon, I'm not giving you the facts like I normally do. Uh, this is from the rumor mill that Amazon will very uh, briefly, swiftly, expeditiously bring about paying their employees at the lowest level beginning at $15 an hour. That's what I've been hearing without having the union to intervene. Speaking of hearing, we're hearing, as you well know, uh, that the Voting Rights Act is under attack again, uh, now before the Supreme Court. Lawmakers in 42 states are considering some 250 measures to create impediments to voting, especially mail-in voting. Now, Section 2 and others is before the U.S. Supreme Court. I know that concerns you, sir. Absolutely. As you know, uh, redundantly, we talk about the aspect of Section 4 and Section 5 being gutted from the 1965 bill. <clears throat> what this says and let me just say this. The Emancipation Proclamation, I'm saying it for the umpteen time, the Emancipation Proclamation did not come to a fruition or realization by President Abraham Lincoln in 1863, did not come by Ox Moses. He did an executive order. And all I'm saying that even with Section 4 and Section 5 being cut, it could have been restored with an executive order. Now, what am I saying? If you sit back on your laurels and let these things happen and you're still getting excited and emotional about whatever it is in terms of your politics for today, you have to think about tomorrow. You have to always be on your P's and Q's as my elders always told me. You have to always be ahead of the other folks because when we're sleeping, they are thinking every time you accomplish something, they're finding a way to take it away from you. We should never allow the 1965 Voter Rights Act to, to be eradicated or removed from this system. Or you have gone back 50, 60, 70 years, even 100 years, in terms of the civil rights movement, you have gone back to be second-class citizens, if citizens at all. Dr. Steele, it seems to me as a journalist that after all the the elections in 2020 and states uh, doing their mail-in voting and other actions to get folks to the polls for the presidential election and others. Now, to me, it seems like there's voter repression uh, on, ongoing, trying to retract what happened in 2020. Is this a new face of voter suppression, you think? And will the Supreme Court allow it, you think? Well, you have a uh, 6-3 uh, uh, vote on the Supreme Court. I'm not saying that because you have so-called uh, six uh, uh, Supreme Court justice that they are considered conservative, that they're not going to have the morality and the, the, the heartness of doing what's right in terms of their implementation or their vote to bring about fairness across the board. But 6-3 is very difficult. But I have confidence in all of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court uh, justice until proven differently because America cannot afford to go back. We have lost everything in terms of the movement. And what I mean by the movement, not a moment, the movement for many of years that we have sacrificed and even the supreme sacrifice of giving up our lives. We will not go back, it will not be tolerated, but we have to have folks in office who understand this and not get caught up in the politics of parties. Yes, take the least of the, the least of, 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 of the politics that's going to set you backwards. But in my opinion, we must bring about 
the morality of doing what's what's right and not get hung up on what party is in the office of what party that my friends, my family, and to be popular that I should be concerned about. You should be concerned about doing what's right. Let me end it like this. It's right versus wrong. Which side are you on? <laughs> That's a good poet there. <laughs> is it also a John Lewis uh, uh, bill before Congress now hoping to restore those rights? As I understand, I could be wrong, but I'm sure, I'm sure the Congress has set the vote on a John Lewis oriented bill to help correct some of the ills you articulate all the time. This is my position. And I did talk to representatives from the White House uh, 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 less, less than a week ago. And this is what I said. And all due respect to all entities and concerns, we need to restore the 1965 Voter Rights Act. We don't need a new Voter Rights Act. We need to restore the 1965 Voter Rights Act with expansion, with expansion. If you do that, everything will be all right. What they are looking at now, as you mentioned earlier, is section two. You done got it section four and, 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 and uh, section five. You know, now you want to take away section two. What does section two say in the 1965 Voter Rights Act? It says it should not be upon this democracy to have the difficulties of people of color, black, brown, blue, green, or white, but particularly the Negro race and people of color should not have the difficulties. You should not create them for them to have the access and the accessibility for the right to vote. Plain and simple. And you trying to destroy that. You making it very difficult for the accessibility of people of color and poor people to have the right to vote. That's un-American, it's treason, it's not respect to, to, to the Constitution. And let me just say this, man. If we had the respect as a country to the United States Constitution uh, of America in terms of, of the right to vote, that just don't go no further with the right to vote. You don't have to have a 1965 uh, a voter rights act from the beginning, even when we got it. If this system was just, and I don't call uh, uh, the, the the legal uh, system uh, uh, justice department or the Department of Justice, I call it legal system because it ain't no justice there. It, it, it's legal, not justice. And <laughs> if the law enforcement of this country would enforce the Constitution. We wouldn't need no special bill or special act like the 1965 Voter Rights Act. Well said. Um, were you uh, satisfied with their response or at least uh, uh, encouraged by their response? Well, they took down what I said. I, I saw uh, um, two of them writing. So um, I might be misled. But I think this administration gets it. I really do. Until proven differently. I think this administration gets it. But well said. you have always push the envelope. <laughs> you have always. Don't go off the cliff, but get as close as you can. You know, somebody told me, and I think you echoed this, that uh, while we loved uh, President Obama, we stopped campaigning for our rights, for things we needed. You know, We, we did. We you need to be satisfied, uh, but you we can't did. stop campaigning. You, you can't stop. I've learned from you. You can't stop okay. campaigning. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely, Ms. E. I don't care who it is in office. You cannot stop pushing the envelope. You have to demand. I don't care if it's my mother, my wife, my brother, my sister, relatives, or whoever is in my best friends. You got to put the demand upon them. Can I say my expression, my cliche, one more time? Politics has never freed the oppressed. The oppressed must free politics. Spoken from a veteran politician and civil rights leader. Listen, uh, I guess finally, 
right down the street from the SCLC building, the National Park Service has about to invest $10.2 million to restore the building, Prince Mason, Hall, Prince Lodge Hall building, where uh, Dr. King's office was. Um, that's right going to be a that's, that's going to send a lot of folks our way, sir. Yes, sir, Missy. Right next door to us, uh, the Prince Hall Masonic Lodge has just uh, been awarded or, or granted. And all due respect to former con Congressman John Lewis, who, who, who established uh, the historic district right there. And the fact being is that it's going to bring a lot of tourism. You're talking about the office right next door to us. The office of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., where he wrote all his papers, most of them anyway. Don't forget about the letter from the Birmingham Jail, which one of the most uh, renowned letters that he wrote. But many of his other writings came right out of that office. And we are right next door. Right next door. And all of the tourism. One of my friends called me from uh, Germany, uh, Berlin, Germany, just on Saturday. Knew about this. and said, Charles. We are applauding SCLC, Congressman John Lewis, Dr. King about this particular aspect of lifting up the, the civil rights movement right next door to you. And what are you going to do about it? I said, when they leave uh, the, the historical and commemorating of Dr. King and his desk, because we got the desk. <laughs> we got the desk at our office that Dr. King used. But when they leave, the great Masonic Prince Hall office, they coming right next door to SCLC. And we got plenty of room downstairs. As you know, Mr. E, we've been waiting on them. Dr. Steele, you've talked about many opportunities downstairs. You, you're a creative kind of thinking person. Now's the time, though, is it not? Now is the time. And your check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> all, all to leave on that note. <laughs> But, but what, <laughs> that's all I need to hear. <laughs> but, uh, finally, but finally, uh, coming with that building is also added uh, park security, park rangers, uh, more security oh, on Auburn Avenue. Most definitely. Uh, but also coming this weekend is the NBA All-Star Game, where many people fear uh, crime is up, shootings are up in Atlanta. Are you concerned about what may happen around Auburn Avenue, Edgewood Avenue this weekend with people coming to town for the All-Star game? Absolutely. I think, man, it was just uh, back here Labor Day, uh, less than a year ago this past Labor Day, two blocks from us, there were several shootings and killings uh, down on Auburn Avenue. But I was encouraged today. I read the Atlanta Journal Constitution with the uh, interim chief of police saying, and this is very, very pertinent to what we can help adhere to, to bring about peace and harmony within our community. He said, don't be so eager to pull out a gun. First of all, you shouldn't have a gun. We don't want you to carry a gun. He said, we're gonna do our job, but you need to learn and understand you don't get emotions to the point, let your emotion overwhelm you and want to be violent. You need to discover communicative skills on how to talk to folks and how to resolve your problems with the tongue rather than the gun. <laughs> I'm a, you've been poetic tonight, sir. I'm gonna leave you on that. Oh, note. yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> the tongue rather you're than the gun. It out of me. You're bringing it out of me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been SCLC TV and, of course, our poetic president, Dr. Charles Steele, Jr. We'll see you next week.